The whole of human history is full of secrets and mysteries. In fact, even now, in the age of science and technology, our whole world order is causing thousands of questions, many of which cannot be fully answered by scientists. The Time Puzzle crew tries to uncover some of those mysteries surrounding the mysterious places of Kazakhstan. Altai is a land which is surrounded by many myths and legends. It is here, where according to Asian legends was a mysterious country called in different cultures of the world in different ways, but mostly known as Shambhala or Bilavodia. It is believed that this is a lost paradise inhabited by all kinds of celestials and mystical creatures. It is not surprising that temples of various religions were built on the expanses of the sacred Altai. But the fate of one of them, which was built almost 500 years ago, is sad and mysterious. Who offered their prayers in the middle of Colbin Mountains? The temple complex itself represents a platform of 4 meters tall and more than 50 meters long. On the platform, a wooden building was built. This is a monastery. What is the fate of the unique library of the temple? A lot of publications were taken from Ablaikit. The sheets were sold at the market. What other treasures could Ablaikit leave behind? They say that when the Ablai Taji left this complex, he threw the gold there. Somewhere in one and a half to two kilometers, there are the Sibin lakes. On the shore of one of the lakes, he also hid his gold. Unique finds of modern archaeologists and legends about the missing treasures of Buddhist monks. Watch right now. One of the legends says when God decided to create the golden edge on earth, the abode of peace and happiness, he called deer, falcon, and setter and ordered them, let each of you find a place for happiness and where your ways converge, there I will create this beautiful land. Long was the way of the deer on the ground, the falcon rose high into the sky and the setter let its broods grow in the very depths. Finally, they met up among the Asian mountains, crystal rivers, and green plains, and all three found peace and happiness. Their God created the Golden Land, Altai. The Ulan area of the East Kazakhstan region is a place of amazing beauty. The Sibin Lakes, spurs of the Kalbinsk Mountains. But very few people know that these magnificent landscapes hide the lost Buddhist mysteries. This is the Time Puzzle, and I am Sergei Alexeyenok. Thanks to its unique geographical location, Kazakhstan has always served as a bridge, linking not only the trade routes between East and West, but it also was a spiritual, crossroads where many religions and spiritual teachings met and embraced. At the beginning of the 18th century, the eastern part of Kazakhstan began to be developed by the Order of Peter the Great. In 1720, Major Ivan Likharov founded the Uskaminogorsk Fortress. Traveling around, he discovers a dilapidated fortress, which with more careful study, turns out to be a mysterious Buddhist monastery. Among the dilapidated buildings, the Kharov's detachment finds unique artifacts left over by the former inhabitants of the monastery. Tsar Peter the Great was always very interested in antiquities, and you know he decrees when he simply ordered the voivoda and the governors to collect the most amazing things. And such things were collected and transported to St. Petersburg. And Peter the Great was struck by the beauty of these things, which depicted the deities. Some of them were treasures, which depicted some figures. And of course, the manuscripts hid him. It was something unusual, unknown, or very little known to Peter and to Russia. Peter 
Therefore, in 1721, Peter the Great got this archive from Ablaikid into his hands. He addressed to the Paris Academy of Sciences of Literature and Fine Arts to translate this Buddhist incomprehensible writings. And then there were first publications about Ablaikid. In fact, the first description of the monastery was given by the Russian ambassador Fyodor Ivanovich Baikov, who visited Ablaikid's founder, Taisha Ablai, in 1654. Headed the Moscow delegation, sent for talks with China, he drove on his way to Beijing, just across this locality. Left for the winter, he witnessed the beginning of the construction of the monastery and the first describes its structure and architecture. Later, it is the notes of Fyodor Baikov that will form the basis of the publications of many monastery researchers. One of those who made the greatest contribution to the study of Ablaikit was Gerhard Friedrich Miller, or as he was called in Russia, Fyodor Ivanovich Miller, a Russian historiographer of German parentage. Born in October 18, 1705, in the city of Hereford, he died in Moscow on October 22, 1783. He was an active member of the St. Petersburg Academy of Sciences in 1747, and he was assigned a title historiographer of the Russian Empire. For a long time, the monastery did not attract the attention of modern archaeologists because it is like a modern era for archaeologists. And now, for our joy, as they say, the archaeological expedition has been working since 2015. We found interesting artifacts. The monastery's area is more than 20 hectares. The length of the walls is more than 2 kilometers. Walls stand both on the ground and on the stone ridges. The birch grove grew on the side of the swamp, which was here in the 17th century. Inhabitants of the monastery threw all the objects of their everyday life into the swamp, which were unfit for work. Shoes, clothes, furniture, cups for collecting donations. Therefore, archaeologists of the future are looking forward to find a lot of interesting findings. Now this moor is really very overgrown, the growth is rather dense, and I think that researchers will have to face certain problems when they begin to conduct their excavations here. The documented descriptions of the monastery and the drawings brought to us the image that its contemporaries saw. But even in 1811, when the researcher Grigory Ivanovich Spassky visited this place and made a detailed survey of the monument, and the drawing of the ruins, it was clear. Even after more than a hundred years, the walls of the temple and the gates of the monastery were still intact. Modern archaeologists also turned their attention to this unique ruins. In 2016, research was began on the archaeological complex of Laikit. The monument itself is a whole complex, the fortress wall, a temple complex, where there was a temple, a prehumous room. The utility rooms were production premises and the furnaces stood where they made bricks, ceramics and glazes, and also the monastic complex itself, where the monks lived. First of all, the scientists studied the temple complex, the fortress wall, the southern and eastern gates of the monastery. The temple complex itself represents a platform of 4 meters tall and more than 50 meters long. On the platform, a wooden building was built. This is a monastery. Inside, having cleared this room, we unearthed it and we examined that there was a brick floor. Up to now, of course, it almost was not preserved, it was dismantled. And also a large amount of tiles, both simple tiles and glazed, and ornamented bricks with plant pattern. Here was the heart of Ablaikit Monastery, a Buddhist temple. Performed in the Chinese style, it occupied an area of more than 200 square meters, and its roof was surrounded by about 20 columns made of wood. Unfortunately, until now, only their stone foundations have been preserved. I was surprised that there was a great temple. 
I was amazed by the magnificence of this temple, the temple complex itself. Let's just say that. I did not expect that when the guys unearthed it last year and when we started digging now, I saw what life was like there. And that the temple was faced with glazed bricks and glazed tiles, had columns. The study of the monastery showed that everything necessary for its construction and work was produced on its territory. All the bricks and ceramic products were made from local clay in special furnaces. We found a brick kiln not far from the temple. This indicates that the church was almost self-sufficient. I mean the Chinese and local people, the monks themselves, they made bricks. We found the remains of bricks. By the way, we also found cart bricks. One of the ceramic decorations was the head of the dragon, found in September 2017, which previously adorned the roof of the monastery. During the study of the atrium, the dragon's head was found in a fragmentary state. We have now restored it a little from three fragments. In general, this head is part of the roof decoration. Turns out that the roof itself was decorated with tiles, and here's the scallop of the roof, and right on the scallop of the roof, there was the roof was decorated with the dragon's head. We need to take a piece of clay, of course, already fully prepared, with impurities, with sand, and on a crude clay, such figure of a dragon was cut out, and only then, all this was lowered in the oven, and at a certain temperature, all this was fired. And then already when the roof itself, the side walls, they turned out to be decorated, the roof was gable, most likely was decorated with tiles. A scallop, the upper part of the roof, was already there. In the 19th century, researchers discovered unique Buddhist manuscripts in the ruins of Oblaikit. Modern archaeologists find and study other artifacts preserved in this place. But there are local legends that tell not only about the spiritual and historical values of Oblaikit. They say that monks had real treasures, which they had time to hide before leaving Oblaikit forever. Where could they hide? It's very difficult. First of all, treasures. These are certainly Buddha statues. They must be big ones. It's very difficult to say because always such things are overgrown with legends. Did they hide it or not? Most likely they could have hidden it. The very history of the existence of the Buddhist monastery of Laikid proved to be extremely short. Full of various secrets and omissions, its legacy is even more mysterious, but the very fact of its existence is also full of hidden meanings and different versions and the motives for its constructions there. For political influence to sacred choice, that's what Peter Sushko told us. He's a senior researcher at the East Kazakhstan Museum Reserve, who has been studying the monastery for several years. This is the most interesting in terms of Buddhist sacredness, and in particular, Lamaism, a monastery that is located on the territory of Kazakhstan. This place was chosen specially because it was chosen by people, monks, who understood what a sacred place it was. Well, we can say the pure drummers, and they chose this place. It is surrounded by streams, rivers, so that it's very difficult to get to this temple. But there is a second version of the choice of a place for building a monastery. In contrast, as distinct from the first, it is more mundane, and it, it is exclusively political in nature. That's what the director of the Inner Asia Times Code's public foundation, Anar Smagulova, told the Time Puzzle program. In general, it is such an interesting artifact in our cultural heritage of our region, as it reflects the influence and presence of the culture of the Mongols here. 
We know that the territory of the Altai, it was the area, so to speak, the interaction and conquest of the Jungarian Hanate. Well, of course, during this period in the 16th century, in the 17th century, there was a progress of their Jungarian cultural projects, relatively speaking, religious ones. Let's talk about Ablaikit as a monument of Buddhism. In one of the very interesting branches of Buddhism, Tibetan or Northern Buddhism. Places for temples, especially Buddhists, were always chosen carefully, since they should be very beautiful, amazing places. There must be lakes, water springs, everything that in general allowed a person to escape from all sorts of unearthly travels, problems, feel relieved from the burden of cares, and in general to profess Buddhist values, prayers, tantras, and everything else. One of the pearls of the Kazakh part of the Altai are the Sibin lakes. Their total area is 31 square kilometers. Not far from them, in the spurs of the Kalbinsk mountains, Ablaikit was located. By the way, local people connect the origin of these lakes with the name of the legendary founder of Buddhism. One of the five Sibin lakes near Ablaikit Monastery, there is a local legend that these lakes were formed with the traces of the Buddha Shakyamuni left when he visited these places in the 5th century BC. Buddhism is the religious and spiritual doctrine of spiritual awakening. Various scholars consider Buddhism to be a religion, a philosophy, an education, an ethical teaching. Despite such a variety of definitions, Buddhism is officially considered the oldest of the world's religions, widespread in China, Japan, Indochina, and some other countries of the East. In Buddhism, there are many different schools and traditions as well as different directions and trends. We know that in the 7th, 8th centuries, Turkic Hagans were, so to speak, they professed or accepted, so to speak, Buddhism and fulfilled the canons of the Buddhist religion. To Shehu, there was such a Buddhist Han, or rather Kagan, who was one of those who accepted Buddhism. Thanks to archaeology, we now know Buddhist temples on the territory of Kazakhstan in the territory of Shetasu and Kyrgyzstan. So Ablaikit is an ancient Buddhist monastery built on the territory of now the Ulan district of the East Kazakhstan region and located 60 kilometers away from the city of Uskaminagorsk. But who built this island of Buddhism almost 500 years ago, so far from the homeland of this religion? Ablaikit, it was a Buddhist temple which was built for sure by people from Lhasa, the center of Tibetan Buddhism, at the request of one of the major feudal lords, the leaders of the Oirats, Ablai Taji in 1654. Kit means monastery in Mongolian. Ablai is the name of the owner of the monastery, Ablai Taji. Ablai Taji was a large Oirat feudal lord, the son of Taji by Bagas. Historians and researchers could not find out the year of birth of this person, but it is known that the Oirat nobleman died in 1674. In the 1640s, Ablai Teji established trade and ambassadorial relationships with Moscow and Russian cities in Siberia. The very construction of the monastery was conducted under the guidance of masters who arrived here at his invitation from China, and the work was carried out by local residents who later served the monastery's economic needs. It is curious that the religious building of one of the most peaceful religions looked more like a real fortress. Most likely this is due to, first of all, the expansive policy of the Jungarians, the state that was conducted primarily to the Kazakhs and then to China. Naturally, they were afraid in response, after the raids, to have a retaliation strike. And that's why they began to strengthen such sacred places. 
while in accepting that the local residents, the Jungarian residents who live there side by side, they could, in case of a raid, take refuge here. One of the spurs of the Kolbinsk Ridge, right behind there is the Ablaikit Monastery. This natural wall reliably protected its inhabitants from any attacks from the west. Fortified walls designed to protect the inhabitants of the monastery from external enemies could not be saved from wars among the Jungars themselves. In 1671, Ablaikit ceased to be a peaceful monastery of monks. The monastery lasted for 17 years and it could have existed even longer if its competing clan, the Durban, did not suspend its work because the tribe of the Hoshids fought against the Durban tribe. And the monastery belonged to Hoshiyut tribe. So in 1671, Ablai Taji suffered defeat in the fight against his brother, Ochirtu Tsitsen Han, and forced to retreat to the territory of Volga, to Kalmyx. In the same year, Ablai was captured and sent to Moscow, where he died three years later. There are other versions of his death. One says that he died in a battle, and the other that he died in prison in Astrakhan city. In any case, the last year of the monastery's existence is 1671. It was not so much destroyed how much it was abandoned as a result of the outbreak of internal strife between the Jungars within their clan. They broke out feuds for power. And this naturally undermined not only the temple, it undermined, in essence, their statehood. Here, let's go back to the story about the famous Ablaikit library. According to the researchers, the monastery was not destroyed and looted by the fighting Jungar clan. Monks just forced to live this place. Surprisingly, the Buddhist lamas leaving did not take anything with them. Artifacts which they left arose great interest among modern scientists. The interlocutor of the program Time Puzzle is the well-known Kazakhstan archaeologist, Doctor of Historical Sciences, Karl Baipakov. The famous preacher and enlightener of the Oirats, Ziya Pandita, who studied in Lhasa, was one of the great connoisseurs of Buddhist religion, and he consecrated this temple. He himself translated many of the manuscripts from the Tibetan language into the Oirat language, and it so happened that this temple became one of the largest collections that were stored in it, in the temple. Dozens, hundreds of manuscripts in which, by the way, all the subtleties of the Buddhist religion were described. The library of the monastery not only kept a lot of unique publications, but it was also like a medieval printing house, where manuscripts were copied and were written. Monachi the monks were engaged in book publishing. Well, when we talk about publishing, we just need to remember that Buddhism supposed cutting out the text on the board and then printing on fairly narrow sheets. They did not interwine, they simply stacked. Uh, when the second semicircular fortress was laid in 1776, some sheets of Buddhist manuscripts, books, and publications were found in the remains of buildings that gave the name to our city and fortress from the very beginning, which I guess came from Ablaikit. Pavel Schirling, an interesting man, a magnificent scientist, was engaged in this sheets, studying them. Lamy, 
компетентности этого человека, который там, европеец приехал и говорит, начинает говорить о буддизме, предложили ему прочесть и про... So an interesting detail, when he was traveling with his father, he went to Kyachta to collect there an edition on Buddhism, lamas to test the competence of this person. Some European who came and started talking about Buddhism offered him to read and comment on the textbook. После окончания пребывания Шиллинга в Кяхте он получил в подарок полное издание Ганджуры. Это то ли 102, то ли, то ли, то ли 107 томов. However, the secret of the Ablaikip library has not been fully disclosed so far. After all, there is information that the manuscripts from the monastery are still found among antiquity lovers. An archaeologist conducting excavations in this place where the monastery stood to this day finds crab salvation texts. There were inscriptions in two languages, Tibetan and Mongolian. In Mongolian, the inscriptions were based on the Uyghur alphabet. What is it? The remains of the manuscripts that were damaged during the attack on the monastery. Or nevertheless, the part that for some reason did not interest the expedition of Liharov or the late robbers. And maybe now scientists find those remains of the library which were carefully hidden by monks from strangers. Unfortunately, many of these questions will not be found soon enough if they to be found at all. We a lot of publications were taken from Ablaikit, but there are no mentions. I don't know whether to believe it or not. I don't see any documents for this. According to stories from several mouse that the sheets were sold at the market. That expeditions were sent several times not to collect manuscripts, but to search for treasuries that were allegedly buried by Buddhist monks, lamas. Alexander Dolgushev is a researcher at Archaeological Expertise, which has been excavating for the second year in the territory formerly occupied by this monastery. This temple was subjected to such devastations, destructions and dragging. What we find here is the pass green door of what was there. In the 60s and 90s of the 20th century, a great blow was struck when local residents began to pull apart fortress walls built of flagstone and build their own houses and farms from them. This village nearby, the neighboring village, it is built on a stone which was pulled out of the fortress walls from the temple. Perhaps the local population did not just mine the building material, but dismantled the walls in search of Buddhist treasures. But could the monastery have treasures? It is a well-known Buddhism tradition to take Buddha statues of precious metals and also to make various objects of sacral needs. Moreover, given that the monastery had everything necessary for technical production and there was no shortage of natural gold deposits in the Altai. Not far from Ablaikit, there is a cave in which there was a gold mining. Here in this edition, I mentioned it, caves of the mountainous part of East Kazakhstan, where the map is shown and this cave is indicated with a gold mine. The gold mine was going. According to stories, according to legends, after the monastery was destroyed, Buddhist monks hid what they called that they could not take out, Buddha statues. It is unknown whether it is truth or not, there is a legend. Not far from the monastery, right next to the mountain spur, which served as the western wall of the monastery, there is a small lake, also called Monastirsky. Now it is overgrown with reeds and water lilies, but according to tradition, years ago the monks carefully courted it and even planted carps in it. Frankly, when I saw a small lake, which is between the rocks, it scared me a little. It frightened me precisely because it seems bottomless. Since its depth, it seems to reflect itself. It is dark, 
and it feels like it attracts people to itself. There is a legend that in the depths of this lake there are underground tunnels, and when the monastery of Laikit was subjected to its last attack, the monks managed to hide in them all their most valuable things. But not only the monastery lake is associated with the possible burial place of the sacred treasures of the monastery, there is another version. They say that when the Ablai Taji left this complex, he threw the gold there. Somewhere in one and a half to two kilometers, there are the Sibin lakes. On the shore of one of the lakes, he also hid this gold. But unfortunately, now we cannot verify it. Despite careful research, scientists have not yet managed to pick up the trail of the missing treasures of the monastery, if they were actually, in fact, existed. Unfortunately, there was a lot before us, so-called black archaeologists, and the whole surface of this monument, literally all in pits. There is a lot. Every year, there was someone coming, digging, treasure hunters, and even the metal things themselves were found not so much. According to the legend, it is certainly known that it was buried somewhere there. It is hidden here. But we're now in the second year of our digging. In 2016-2017, we have been working, and until now we have found no precious thing, not a piece of precious metal. Perhaps the legend of treasure and gold of Ablaikit is just a beautiful myth, born in these open spaces, or maybe it's very real fact. Whether it is so or not, the near future and a new approach in the studies of this territory will show us. I think in the next year or two, research will begin there. We will check with the metal detector the bottom of this lake and the neighboring Sibin lakes. But the main value of Ablaikit for scientists, of course, its historical significance. After all, it was this temple that served as the first visiting card of the culture of the ancient East, which got to Europe. Ablaikit in itself is the very place that, as a matter of fact, was the beginning of that very large scientific direction of Oriental studies, like the study of Tibetan Buddhism. And the Ablaikit itself played a huge role, which we know now. These manuscripts are being studied, and these manuscripts are not lost. Most of them are preserved. They're in the archive of the Institute of Eastern Manuscripts in St. Petersburg. Place that the monks of the monastery meditated, trying to reach nirvana. It is really a holy, amazing, sacred place which played a huge role in understanding the development of the culture and religion of Tibetan Buddhism. For the cultural heritage of Kazakhstan, Ablaikit is of great importance. Center of Tibetan Buddhism as the place where the first steps of Tibetan Buddhism began on the territory of Kazakhstan. And this trace has remained. And now there is this temple, the remains of this temple, is on the territory of Kazakhstan. So we came to the end of our short excursion to an amazing place, combining several aspects of the world around us. Here, history and spiritual searches 
of mankind interwined mysteriously, expressed in one of the most mysterious Eastern religions, and the very power and mystery of this land bearing the ancient name Altai. Undoubtedly, all the participants in the Time Puzzle crew have felt the fullness of that feeling when they touch something incomprehensible and mysterious. But what exactly served this reason? The terrain itself of the monastery that was here, or perhaps a combination of these two factors, remained a mystery to us. And everyone has to find their own answer. Yes, For several you. centuries, this land has kept in itself the amazing secrets of Ablaikit Monastery. I am sure that in the near future, thanks to the efforts of historians and archaeologists, we will reveal even more fascinating details of its short life. It was the time puzzle, and I am Sergei Alexeyevich.